and I'm Bill Siska. It's been over a month since we began our course. I hope you're very much enjoying watching the tapes that we are running and reading the chapters in John Belton's American Cinema, American Culture text. What we've done so far, we've covered quite a bit of ground. We've done the classical Hollywood style, studio system, star system. We've studied film language, American film comedy, particularly romantic comedy, combat film. And this evening, we're going to do the Western, and we'll do a reviewing of the segment on film language. The classical Hollywood style shows us the ways in which what was an invention became the foundation of an entertainment industry. And it was a style adapted by this industry that focuses particularly on story and character. Everything else intends to be invisible other than those characters on the screen. The studio system was developed in order to produce this highly commercial art form. The studio system was a factory system. It in turn created the star system as a way to market the movies, turning actors into what we call stars. Uh, film language explains the ins and outs of how movies are put together. Then with the American film comedy segment, the program focuses on romantic comedy. We showed you some of Charlie Chaplin in the beginning uh, segment of the course, and this evening we're going to show you some of Buster Keaton. The combat film showed us primarily World War II films and then those dealing with Korea and Vietnam. And this, e this evening the Western will be uh, focused on. Now, what you notice from the tapes is that there are a lot of very exciting clips from films. Some wonderful interviews, particularly, I think, with Martin Scorsese, Peter Bogdanovich, this evening John Wayne and John Ford. Um, but we don't get to see whole films. So what I highly recommend is that each week you view on your own a feature film, which you can uh, check out from the public library or rent from a video store or just pick up on one of the many television stations that runs classic American cinema, uh, to get an idea of the real joy and pleasure of watching movies and, and how movies exist as an art form. Uh, my other purpose in being here is to alert you to the midterm examination, which you'll be taking in a few days, and to let you know what kinds of questions you can expect to get on that examination. I'll be giving you matching questions. For example, um, here's one that, that gives us a couple of choices, editing and tracking shot. Uh, and you can see on the screen how these would go together. Uh, two people walking along the river, we move with them. Actually, we know it's the camera moving with them. And when the camera moves, it's a tracking shot, so-called because the camera very often is put on railroad tracks that are laid for that purpose. Uh, nowadays, they also do them with automobiles or any kind of rubberized wheel uh, that can be pushed by uh, assistance. Okay, and then editing is the cutting together of pieces of film. So here's an example of kinds of questions you can expect to, uh, to get on your exam. True and false. Okay, just circle the correct answer. Uh, here's our question. Most 90 to 120 minute films consist of approximately 100 shots. Well, you would know that that's false because most movies, as it points out in the text, and if you ever sat down and counted the shots, uh, during a film, you would know that there are usually around 600 such shots in a 120-minute film. Um, more than half of the exam will enable you to do some writing, will enable you to show what you know and what you can communicate uh, through both short essays, short answers. Uh, so the example here is given, describe the structure of vertical integration in the studio system. And you would respond that vertical integration meant that the studios owned the means of production, distribution, and exhibition of their product. And you would go on saying a few words about how they then moved the, the movies into the movie theaters and that they put everybody under contract. They controlled all the means of that production, something which ended in the early 1950s. Then your longer response will be on an essay. Uh, which will probably deal with one of the genre uh, sections of the course. I'll ask you a general question about film comedy or the Western or the combat film. 
my general practice when I give an essay uh, question is to give you choices. In other words, I'll give you three questions and I'll ask you to respond to one. So if you're drawing a blank on film comedy but you feel pretty comfortable with combat film, you'll be able to respond uh, to that question and avoid the other. Although you, you do need to know something about film comedy because the object of part of the examination will cover a little bit of everything that we've done. Um, it will be a very fair test and if you study hard, uh, I hope you'll do very well. Now I'd like to fill in one of the things that the tape on comedy did not fill in, and that is um, the life and work and importance as a film artist of Buster Keaton. Buster Keaton was born into a show business family. He was born in Kansas, and if you ever have seen him in a sound film, you know he has a very thick New York accent, so you realize he was born on the road. Uh, he got started in vaudeville at the age of three, he was part of an act with his parents in which uh, he was known as the human mop being thrown around the stage by his father, which perhaps accounts for the problems he had with his father throughout his life. Um, but he did it impassively. He never showed any emotion. He never showed that he was being hurt. He carried this on through his entire career. He was known as the great stone face. When he was asked about that, how, how it was that he decided on that persona, his response was, gee, I didn't realize I wasn't showing any emotion or expression, just that what I was doing was so darn hard that I had to concentrate on getting the job done and not worry about whether I was smiling through it or not. Nevertheless, it's this stone face, his, his impassively performing the impossible that has gained him the stature that he has today. Keaton, unlike Chaplin, did physically dangerous stunts. Chaplin's stunts tended to be more in the manner of ballet, of dance. But Keaton did things that were really scary and dangerous. And in fact, at one point in the mid-1920s, he had broken his back, uh, but kept working. Wasn't discovered until some years later when he had a medical examination. Like Chaplin, he also makes an ingenious use of props. And you'll see several such props in the uh, film that we're about to see called Cops. Um, blind luck and fate always play a role in what happens to his character. And then finally, he has what we have, what we'll call cinematic construction to his comedies. One of the things that's often said about Chaplin is that to a certain extent, he's setting up the camera to film his act. Uh, that isn't necessarily a negative thing. Uh, the same can be said of Fred Astaire, who actually insisted that the camera be set in a full shot and is in as few shots as possible for any dance number to prove that he was actually doing the dancing and that it wasn't the editing that was uh, communicating it to us. Keaton, on the other hand, is always aware of screen space. Uh, his cinematic construction can be analyzed through use of the frame, uh, volume and movement within the frame, and finally editing, all used to produce comic meaning. Uh, what we're going to see in Cops is, as an example of the use of the frame, uh, a taxi pulls into and then out of frame, revealing a character or object behind it, one that wasn't there before. Uh, another use of the frame combined with editing that is just, I think, ingenious, pure cinema, uh, is the beginning of the film where prison bars holding Buster in are revealed through a cutting to be the gates to a mansion from which he is kept out. Now, the film Cops is one of the many 1920s films uh, by Keaton, Chaplin, Harold Lloyd, um, that have to do with success, with the drive to success, particularly business success in American society. And these comic figures dealt with it and critiqued it in, in a most ingenious way. A dangerous stunt uh, that we're going to see is Keaton going airborne from a ladder and landing on another character. Uh, you might be able to see that he's suspended by a wire, but nevertheless, it's a very dangerous stunt, and Keaton is often hurt doing these stunts. Finally, the use of shapes and volumes, uh, the use of the triangular building, which hides Buster from the cops who are chasing him, is one example of that. Now, after we see the film, uh, we'll come back, and I'll point out some more examples to you, uh, just to clarify that what you're looking at and thinking 
are examples of the cinematic construction using the frame and using editing uh, are in fact there. Let's see now the film Cops. Buster does what he can to become a success at business, mistakenly thinking he's purchased the household goods of the man who turns out to be a policeman.
It's a marvelous film. In case you were wondering about the motto supplied by Harry Houdini, who was a member of the Keaton's traveling troop of vaudevillians, love laughs at locksmiths. Love laughs at locksmiths because love is the key. Although it doesn't seem to have worked in Buster Keaton's life any more than it works for him in this film that we've just seen. Now the Keaton character is generally assumed to be weak or incompetent. The character is then given an imperative to act. In this case, the woman of his dreams won't speak to him until he becomes a successful businessman. And then Keaton performs the seemingly impossible through ordinary step by step. Although in this film, it doesn't seem to work out for the better for him. Now some of the examples of frame, dangerous stunt, volumes that you may have picked up in this film. Uh, I think th the most uh, spectacular moment is when a truck speeds through the frame during the chase, comes in from left to right, and as it exits the frame, Buster grabs the rear handle of the truck and is literally yanked out of the frame. A very dangerous stunt. Uh, volumes, the lone Buster walking down the wide street as the cops burst into the frame, filling it with black. There's an example of fate and blind chance in the anarchist bomb, which lands in Buster's wagon. And finally, an, a use of the frame in editing, analogous to the bars at the beginning, which become the gates to the mansion. The doors, which are going to protect Buster from the cop, cops, are shown as we cut to a longer shot to actually be the doors to the police station, where he will be incarcerated. Now, as I let you go, I want to give you one final reminder on the midterm. Your course manual should be the first tool in reviewing for the examination. Each unit uh, in the course manual gives us learning objectives and a summation of what occurs both in the book chapters and in the video programming. So that's where you should start with your studying and go back to the book and uh, review any parts of tapes that you feel you need to. Study hard and good luck on the exam. Thank you.